Okay, thank you very much for the invitation and to be here in Belgrade. It's my first time in Belgrade, and I hope also that will be the last one. Um, I, got, I work in the library, but I'm a physicist, I always say that, just to make it clear. And I, I would like to share with you uh, what are the challenges that we face as a, a university or as a research center. Because we, when we talk about open science, uh, and you start to talk with your rector, vice rector, your directors, sometimes it's like a complete mess. Sometimes when we start with open science, we use this taxonomy. This is a taxonomy coming from Foster, a European project uh, that I also recommend to visit. They have a lot of good resources. And when you show that to your rector, say, OK, that's very complicated because we are touching everything. And that's the point. When we talk about open science, we are talking about research in general. We always say that we hopefully, in a, in a soon, better than later, we will, there will be no need to talk about open science. We we'll talk <coughs> science in general. So when we when we bring this this uh, image to the people who has to decide at the university, we have to somehow show them in pieces and to decide what are we going to do. I, I, have, a, I have some uh, challenges that you can put in a list when we, you want to uh, introduce the open science principles in your uh, research uh, institution. First is to understand what it means. And there is not a, a clear understanding and probably a common definition of open science I, I will show you later. But we can agree on which are the areas we want to work. And it could be different. That's another import, important thing. That in some institutions, we will have some priorities. In other institutions, we will have another priorities. And that's important to uh, state that. We have to prepare the institution for a change. And before, Paul has already mentioned that we need this cultural change. And that's another really huge uh, challenge. Because uh, working at the university, you know that it's a really conservative institution, probably one of the most conservative institutions, and even researchers are so conservative for it to change. So that's an important issue that you need to overcome. Then you also have you have another challenge, this knowledge, these new ways of doing science. There are already science and researchers that are doing different things than the traditional one. For instance, we have in Barcelona a group of uh, researchers doing citizen science, that they do some performance in uh, festivals of theater. How are you going to put that in your curriculum? This is not a paper, there is not a, a data set, but it's not another way. And for them it's research, and we have to acknowledge that as research. We also have uh, new infrastructures. We need new infrastructures, and as Vanessa already mentioned, they are very important that those infrastructures must be open. So it's important to improve the infrastructures we have. We don't have to build new, new and new infrastructures. Maybe we have to join already existing infrastructures, but we have to figure out how we join and also how we sustain those infrastructures. We have to share more outputs, but not just outputs, methodologies. I mean, sometimes, and we already have uh, a road from publications that we have shared a lot of publications, but what about code? What about data? What about methodologies? There are other outputs that we need to share if we want to be in these open science principles. And finally, and I think it's one of the key points, we have to reshape evaluation and assessment. And I think already Paul mentioned that. Uh, we still rely in many countries in this easy way to evaluate science, that we just click a button, and if you have all the impact factors in a list, it's very easy to say you are 10, you are 20, or you are 50. But for me, this is not evaluating science. This is more like, like an audit of science. Okay, where did you publish? That's the point. So those are some of the challenges that I want to address now on how we can face those challenges from this university point of view. So to start, and we did already in the little, was I think that every institution should have a roadmap. And it's a roadmap that can be different, as I mentioned before, from one institution to another one. 
Because first we have to agree how to define open science. Then we have to identify in which areas we want to work. If I go back to the first one, you see that there are a lot of opportunities to work. There are a lot of areas to work. So maybe one institution will say, okay, I'm brave enough to start with evaluation. Good. Another institution will say, no, I will focus on data. Another institution will say, okay, I will to keep uh, the work that I've done in uh, publications. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, areas that we have to identify and prioritize. I think it's important also that as an institution we should acknowledge what has been done until now. Because sometimes we forget to mention all the work that has been done and to continue that work and to identify those leaders that are working on those areas. We have to engage with all the people that could be involved in the change. It's not just enough to say, okay, the library will lead the change. Well, it's fair enough. But we have to bring researchers, we have to bring the research officers, we have to bring the staff, we have to bring as many people as possible if we want to succeed for this cultural change. And I always suggest that also we should bring people from outside. If we want to really be open and we want to share with the society, it could be a good idea to bring people from outside and to ask them. We did that already uh, in July, we did a conference in Barcelona, or the digital transformation, and we want that people from outside will come to the university and we ask them, what do you expect from us? And it was really interesting to see what they were asking us. Because sometimes we are just closed on those walls, looking to each other, talking about our problem, but we have to realize what the society expects to us. I think we should break those walls, not just to go out, but also to invite people to come in. We have to plan actions and also we have to monitor the actions because it's not enough to say, okay, I will have a policy, I will have this plan. We have a policy in Barcelona for open access from 2011. Guess who is the only one who is monitoring the policy? And once you have the actions and once you monitor the actions, it's important to review what I've done because as I always say to my directors, be brave to fail. I mean, it's important to fail and to learn from failures. It's, it, it's probably in this area, in open science, you don't succeed on the first time. You always have to reshape your ideas, reshape your actions. But you have to try. Because it's very easy just to sit down and wait that other people will do things and you just wait and try to get the best thing and then to copy. I think it's Fair enough to begin to be part of the change and begin to try. If you succeed, perfect. But if you fail, also perfect. Just learn from values and make this review and update. Okay, so let's start to create the roadmap. And let's start by definitions. I just took a couple of definitions. Uh, the one from the commission that says that open science aims at transforming science through ICT tools, networks, and media to make research more open, global, collaborative, creative, and closer to society. There are important things here. First, that open science has a goal, this transformation of science. And also another important thing is that we want to get closer to the society, as I mentioned before. If we take another definition from Wikipedia, this case, you can change it if you don't like it, as you know. Uh, open science is shown here as a movement, because we already were talking about the open movement, like the, the, the originally the free software movement, but also the open access movement. So here, open science is seen as a movement, but again, to make scientific research data and dissemination accessible to all levels of an inquiring society. So again, the, the importance of the society. And here is stated, not just the professional society, but the amateur society, because that's what we are uh, fulfilling. We are reaching to, to make the society get more involved with us. We can identify working areas. We put some of the areas here. Uh, the clear one, publications. We have been working a lot, many years, for uh, open access. We are more and more engaged now in research data, another important issue. There are some countries that are far away from 
where we are, for instance, in Catalonia, the UK are far away from, from us in research data, but there are good examples that we can follow, so it's important to see which are the champions on these areas. We also can identify, okay, let's work in other kind of research outputs. For an easy one could be code. So why not uh, try to share as much code as possible? We also have to work in this societal impact. It's not enough to do research for us, this society important uh, issue. We have to talk, work on evaluation. We have to work on infrastructures, on policies, well, establish which will be our uh, plans, and go beyond science and research. As I'll show you at the end of my presentation, I think that if we are discussing here on open science, it would make it would be not it would not make sense to skip open education. So if you are an institution and you really want to go forward with open science, probably will be a need also to go in parallel on open education, another kind of openness. So probably when we are identifying, identifying areas at the university or at, uh, at an institution like, like this one, you have to go beyond the science and the research. When, when we say that we have to work with and for the people, I think we have to, as, as I mentioned before, to acknowledge those leaderships, to see which are the champions in all these areas we want to identify. Sure, in your institution you have a champion on open access, a champion on research data, a champion on citizen science, so you can identify those people and bring them into the discussion. We have to identify these new people doing, these people doing new things, these new behaviors. Maybe you have a, some research group that are sharing the notebook in, from the lab earlier before they are publishing. So you can go there and discuss with them why are you doing that. Or people doing more uh, research on social, societal impact, so you can bring them uh, into the discussion. We have to, to begin to understand how you want to reward these new outputs and these new methodologies. An important thing, you have to train. You have to train all the people in all levels. Sometimes we focus on, okay, let's train the young ones, let's train the PhD students, but we should also train the seniors. Supervisors, because if not, the students go to the supervisor. The supervisor say, "Okay, forget about that. We have to publish in this top journal, and that's the point." So it's important to engage all levels of the institution, and you have to engage also all the staff. It's important because sometimes, for instance, in, in Barcelona, we have this uh, mandatory uh, policy that all PhD thesis, dissertations, must be online. But there is still people, staff people, in the secretary of the schools telling our PhD students, oh, you shouldn't put that on the internet because everybody will copy. And that's a problem. Okay. So we have to change these mindsets, these working frames, and again, another point, to engage citizens, to, to bring them into the discussion. doesn't mean that citizens should uh, establish our research, but we, we, we could be a good idea to bring them and to discuss with them and also to explain what we are doing, especially if you are also a founding institution. So, if we start to understand what we have been doing until now, we can make ourselves questions like that. For instance, if we focus in open access to publications, we can ask you know, to ourselves, is there an institutional policy? Have we already in place a policy, a mandate? that establish um, something like publishing in the repository? Is there an institutional repository ready to support this open access policy? And what about our institutional journals? There, there are a lot of institutions that are publishing journals. Uh, are our journals open? And when I say open, I say not just public. Open needs something else. Needs, for instance, a license. No? A few, a few uh, months ago, we were in, in Croatia and we already did a, a, a training session for editors, explaining what is open and what is not open, and explaining how to use a license and how to use it properly. So it's important to to make those questions to ourselves. And if we have a university press, 
we should also ask, is our institutional press open? Are, doesn't mean that it has to be completely open as in UCL, but maybe our university press could start some experience, some projects, some pilots on opening some collections. That's what we are doing in Barcelona. Okay, if we answer that, for instance, we have a policy, we have a repository, that's in Barcelona we have this policy, we have a repository, we have open access in the journals, we have our university press somehow now more engaged in openness. But what about monitoring the policy? Who is monitoring the policy? We have a policy in 2011, I will show you now the results. But more questions, if we want to make the transition, we can ask ourselves, which is the current percentage of open access in my institution? I, this morning I just uh, was answering a an uh, an, an message from another university, and they were surprised. Wow, we are really good in open access. We are beyond 60%. <coughs> and they couldn't believe. They were saying, we cannot do it better than the Dutch. And I said, yes, you are doing better. I don't know, maybe the Dutch don't have the proper figures, but you are doing good. So they were surprised from the library. And they were surprised because nobody has already made that question. How are we now in open access? And we can also make calculations of how much it will cost to change the model that we have already into an open access model famous plan is or whatever. So it, well, once we have all this data, we can start uh, this, the discussions. So I will show you with, with you some of this uh, information that we have in Barcelona. This is the, the, the articles that we have in our CRIS system in gray. That's the, where they are the curricula of our researchers. And as you see, well, the, red, the green ones is how many papers we have in the repository. We are not doing really well. But there is people that are happy because they say it's a success, it's a success to have 20%. That was a, some, um, some, challenge, uh, some, some goal that was established many years ago. If your repository has 20%, that's great. Well, I could say that for me, it's not great. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a, a, what we have now. But this helps when you bring this image to your vice rector and you say, we should do something in our institutional policy. I also need that for each vice rector, even the rector, of how much do you uh, fulfill the policy. And I have to tell you that the numbers were really, really low. But then they react and they reach uh, to the top. Another point. OK, that's not enough to know where, what do you have in the repository. What is your percentage of open access? This is our percentage of open access during the last seven years. And as you see, the full gold, so meaning publishing in open access journal, is increasing year after year. That's important. Who is paying that? Is the institution paying? I will show you that. Not really. So probably it will be the projects, or probably it will be the researchers with their money. So it's important to give an answer to that. Even the ivory is quite going up, but this is somehow really stable. But also it's stable because we as institution, we don't pay ivory. So it's an important issue to take into account. This bronze is uh, something that is a, a, a common uh, behavior because bronze means that the papers are publicly available but without uh, any license. And many publishers open their contents after three, four years. So the impact of bronze is bigger on the years, uh, like, um, in the old years, than in the recent years. So probably in the future, 2015, 16, will be more bronzer than we are now. And green it means only repository. Well, it also helps you to understand where are your papers, because sometimes in this green, it's not your repository. Maybe your papers are in other places, and it's important to know where are those papers. Another important thing is, how researchers react when they get more chased by the funders. And this is the, the difference. When the commission asks them, you must put, uh, you must publish an, an open access journal or to put it in the repository, then the percentage goes higher, almost to 70%. So probably if you have a strength policy, probably the researchers will react in a different way. We need that also to 
to make a bit of competition between uh, different centers. We did that last uh, October during the Open Access Week. We want to put all our centers in competition. Who is the most open you know, of the centers? You know who is? The library. The, li the, the, the library. The, I mean, not the library, but the, uh, the library science school, the school of library. Okay? They are reaching almost 90%. Who is the closest? Geology. I call it the Earth Science now. The School of Earth Science. So it doesn't. I, they they publish more, of course. They they publish more papers than the, the library studies, but they are more close. And it's important to see, for instance, the, the green one. You anyone want to, to guess who is this one? <laughs> Mathematics. And the, the effect of archive, for instance. And with this, you can have different uh, behaviors. And you can study, for instance, the dean of economics is pushing to have all the papers in the repository. And that's why economics also has a lot of green. Okay? And another surprise is art. Art is very bold. And it's because usually art do not publish papers. They just publish a few of papers. But most of the journals in art where they publish are local, and those local journals are completely open. So it's important to have all the data to discuss with those researchers, why they publish there, what, are, what do you need for to have more green, etc., etc. And also you can make these comparisions with other institutions. That methodology is always is also being used in the Netherlands here, and then you can figure out with the Netherlands how do you perform uh, with other institutions, not just in your country, but also in other countries. And you see here, for instance, in the Netherlands, the, the effect of hybrid due to this uh, offsetting and these uh, negotiations that they have with different publishers. We also publish all the funds that we give to our researchers for publishing open access, and that's also important to share, because this project also make a lot of uh, information about the price of APCs. This is a project called Open APC, and if you have funds for publishing or you have information <coughs> about what are you publishing or how much do you pay for APCs, it would be important to put all that information in this project. And then when you have all this picture of what has been done until now, then we can start discussing with data and evidences about could we achieve 100% of open access in publications? This is one of the goals. Are we ready for this offsetting or flipping or all these kind of uh, transitions to open access? Are we going to pay more, to pay less? And what about these new ideas of the publications, uh, publishing platforms, these new tools for disseminating your results that they are also offering uh, open peer review and they don't rely on any impact factor? That's another important issue that we have to face in the future. We also can have the same picture in other, uh, in other subjects. For instance, in the area of infrastructures, we can ask ourselves, do we provide a repository uh, for publications, data, and code? Is our repository ready to, uh, to have data? And what about research data management? Are we giving some facilities to our researchers to work with data? Because sometimes when you ask them, they will tell you, I'm using Dropbox, I'm using Google Drive, or I'm using other things. But we as an institution are offering something to them. And what about digital humanities? Are we helping them in digital humanities? Or again, they are looking to external facilities. And once we have those facilities, are we connected to the external society, the external facilities, so for instance, if we are offering them these new research uh, data repositories, will be those facilities ready to connect to this European Open Science Cloud or other facilities that will be in the future? And moreover, are we offering some services uh, as a top layer to help them, or we just leave the infrastructures there, we give them terrace and terrace, but we don't help them, for instance, to make the data fair? And have we done an analysis of cost? How much does all these facilities cost? 
And when we have all these pictures in all the different areas, then we can establish goals. Okay? And for instance, here I just put a couple of goals from the Amsterdam uh, call for action on open science that were uh, it was a call <coughs> that was uh, stayed in 2016 when the Netherlands was the, having the presidency of the commission. Okay, we can say uh, let's have this full open access in the future. I, I would say probably not 100, maybe we can reach 90 or 85. <coughs> it would be more realistic for 2020. And also we can establish this goal of, okay, let's try to be, to have our data more reusable. But those goals also have to be accompanied by other actions. And here, there are other actions that I think we have to uh, put uh, in place as soon as possible. The new assessment, the new rewards, the new evaluation systems, and the alignment of policies. It's important to align the different policies because we cannot ask our researchers to do things in a different way than, for instance, Europe or any of the funders are asking to them. We have to do other actions, exploring new ways of evaluation, retain control over research outputs, sharing by default, that's important, to explain why you are going to close, not until now we, we are explaining why we are opening. Transparency, new negotiations, institutional policies, etc., etc. And that's what we have done at the University of Barcelona. In the last two years, we are working on having, with this new, the new uh, rector and the new team, we have established like uh, we, we will we'll call it yet like a, a plan, but it's like a draft plan, and we have focused in four of the working areas. The easiest one, the open access, because we already have the policy from 2011. A challenge one, the research data management. We already put a, a group of researchers together in a room like this one, representing our 15 research centers or institutes, and to discuss with them what are your problems, your difficulties on sharing data. The, the next one that is already on, on place and that we are already having some discussions is how to change evaluation. We don't want to change evaluation radically. We think that it's important to change step by step, but beginning to introduce new concepts. So instead of asking our researchers, where did you publish, maybe to say, which is your best output? You can say data set, or you can say code, doesn't matter. And the public engagement, I think it's also important to, as I mentioned many times before, uh, to bring the society into our university. And we already have a very interesting citizen science projects in our institution, so probably what we need <coughs> is to show them more open. I think what Paul just mentioned in his talk, to have a center or an office of a citizen science would help to show those projects that are there, but nobody, uh, no, not nobody, but just a few people uh, know that they are going on. So we, we, we created a steering committee with dedicated working groups. We have uh, a list of actions after we have analyzed uh, what we are, how we are, and which is our current situation. And we are already planning training sessions to all the community. For instance, next week we will have a training session on open science for PhD students, but we already had some sessions with uh, senior researchers. So currently we have this institutional open access policy. We link to the Greece to make the life of researchers easier. We have the funds for open access that we have already excluded hybrid from the beginning, from 2010. We have open access at all the institutional journals and we have those experiences at the university press. So what we plan to do for the next year? Well, there is already in place the review of institutional policy on open access. Probably what we are planning to do is to link the, uh, the policy to the evaluation. And it's something that can be done because our economic school has already done and nothing has happened. I mean, there was no revolution or complaining from the researchers. Our technical, uh, the Technical University of Catalonia has already done that from 2015. So the idea is if the paper is not in the repository, this paper will not count in our research assessment, in our internal research assessment, of course. So we can do that. I mean, evaluation outside will be different, but at, at least it doesn't affect if you do that in, a, in, your, in your institution. They can publish whatever they want, but at least the paper should be in the repository. 
We also want to review the open access uh, funds for publication. If it's uh, we, this year, we already reviewed. We cut a little bit amount of money, but we have to figure out if it makes sense that we will pay 2,000, 3,000 uh, euros for a paper, or how much we want to cut that, or we want to uh, expand our budget. It's a discussion that is going on. We also want to continue opening different collections at the university press. Uh, I think the researchers are really happy with that because at the end, researchers, what they want is dissemination. <coughs> they are not earning uh, a lot of money by, buying, uh, by selling books. So probably what they want is to get their ideas and their research outputs more open than to just trying to buy a bunch of books. Uh, we want also to publish as much information as possible in the of our publication costs, we already made. A, we ask a lawyer if it's possible or not. It seems that in Spain we have this law of transparency that it's not just a, an option; it's a must. So probably in the future we'll have information about what we are paying at the Spanish level. And we want to already calculate this offsetting and flipping a scenarios to say, okay, how much we are publishing, how much it will cost to us to to publish. Openly, etc., etc. And we have other planned actions in other of this area that I mentioned before. We have already been discussing for the last probably one year and a half about establishing a research data management policy. Uh, when there is the survey from the level, I'm a bit ashamed to say, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we still don't have the policy, and all our uh, colleagues have one. I think it's important to have a policy. It's not like to mandate to share, but at least to establish some principles, some protocols to have the research data more uh, structured, clean, and easier for researchers. <coughs> we want also to study the, the, we are already engaged in analysis of which is the infrastructure we should provide our researchers, not just for work, also to archive and to publish the, the data. How to sustain infrastructures? I already have like a list. How much it costs the OEJ? How much it costs archive? And it's something that I want to bring to my research, to my rector, and to say we should establish a budget on for these external open infrastructures if we want to follow these open science principles. We want to to have this introduction of these new outputs and acknowledge all these citizen science activities that are still difficult to put in the, in the cities. And as I mentioned, we will be doing a lot of training at all the university levels. So I would just invite you to be as open as possible. And as it was shown in this meeting in the Wheeler uh, room in Berkeley almost 10 years ago, the students were asking the universities to be open. And they say, this is the, the Wheeler Declaration, they say to the universities that if they want to be open, they should make their research open access. They should have all the course materials as open educational resources. They should use, the university should use free software as much as possible. Patent should be for public good. And finally, public internet could not be censored. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for, for Ignacio this time? There is one question over there. Maybe, maybe to make this much more interactive here. Uh, so, uh, being in Serbia is a little bit lucky in the last few months since the Ministry of Science uh, which finance the majority of the uh, national research is mandate open access. <coughs> now I'm talking about open access, not open science. Mm -hmm. So in your institution and your university is very interesting for us because uh, at the University of Berwick we just established a virtual group uh, because we have to adopt the institutional policy for the whole university and all, also the other universities in Serbia is also pushed by the national policy to adopt. The problem is that um, for the publications funded by the 
European money or by the government money, it is not a problem. Also, the local public channels is also not a problem since they are already open mm -hmm. access. Thesis, we have already mandated it and everything is okay. But the problem is in textbooks and in the material which is not funded by the funder which mandate open access. So it will be very interesting for us if you share with us how did you resolve this part of uh, research. Thank yes, you. I mean, <coughs> textbooks is very difficult. Even books are difficult because usually books are more closed and the publishers do not allow us uh, to be as open as other uh, outputs. But we are, we are keeping asking. And uh, educational resources, for instance, we did it as a, I could say, as a policy that has not been written any, at any time. We say to our researchers or to our uh, faculty, if you want to put to share this educational resource in the repository, you have to choose a CC license. And they do it. Probably they, they begin to use the most closed license, but we already have the resources there. And they are happy with that. So that's something that you can do. Uh, regarding uh, publications that are not funded, we have a lot. I mean, I showed you the, the centers, and most of the, the centers that are more open, they don't have really uh, funded projects. But they already, if you ask them to have a copy in the repository, and you help them with the, all these copyright issues, they will be happy to do it. What, what we did, and that's important, is to connect any infrastructure you already have on play, in place. For instance, the CRIS. The CRIS system, where they publish, the, where they have all the CVs and we have the institutional data on uh, the research production, they already used to, to work with that and they do not complain because it's a useful tool that they can have the different layouts of the CVs when they have to apply for one grant or the other one. So they're happy to have that. So there, we include as much information as possible about copyright. So at this moment, when any, any researcher in our institution say, I have published this paper, the journal is already attached with the copyright uh, policy. So they have blue or green. Blue means the author manuscript, green means the published version. And they know that if it's blue, they have to put the author manuscript. And if it's green, they have to put the PDF. And they don't have to bother with anything else. Because we, we manage all the metadata as a library, we manage all the embargo periods, everything like that. So that's a, a, a way, I mean, you don't ask the researchers to spend a lot of time because they will be really reluctant to collaborate with you. <coughs> but we can talk later if you want and, and discuss uh, any exchange of